today's demonstration that I would like to conduct for you is how to make a plate. Uh, with this process, um, as always, I have my piece of clay and I've prepared it in advance by securely sticking it to this plastic bat, which sits again over the bat pins on my potter's wheel. Uh, this particular piece of clay is about four pounds, so I'll be able to make a fairly large plate, fairly wide plate, almost like a serving platter with this particular piece of clay. So this is going to take up uh, a pretty good space as far as the bat goes. I'm going to leave a fairly wide foot ring for my plate and the ring of the plate will be almost as wide as the bat itself when I'm done. The bat is 14 inches. The plate's probably going to be somewhere around 11 or 12 inches across, so it'll be uh, about, about the size of a nice serving platter. So, as we begin, uh, my wheel is, is turned on. I have power to the wheel, and we'll begin. As with any piece of pottery that you're going to make on the wheel, you need uh, your hands need to be wet, and we need to cone and center this piece of clay. This again, as I commonly work with here at the wheel, um, I am working with a piece of pugged clay. Uh, pugged in this case, the clay that I'm using. Uh, this happens to be, the name of the clay body is Dover White. This is a, uh, a high fire clay, it fires to cone five. So it's kind of a mid-range for some potters, but that's what we use here. And this is a nice white body clay. It's very versatile for, for both throwing and hand building purposes. Um, the pug clay that I use here, this is largely recycled clay. Uh, for those who have a pug mill, uh, you can simply take, you can take fresh clay, mass produced clay, and you can run it through the pug mill and soften it up or warm it up a little bit, some potters like to do. What I'm doing with pug clay here is I'm recycling scraps. The scraps that my hand builders leave me, I'm recycling into, into pug clay that we use here at the wheel. So as I go through my coning and centering process here, remember again, the left palm comes in here at about 7 o'clock, the right fingertips come in at about 1 o'clock, and I make a big C clamp and I squeeze inward and upward applying an even amount of pressure across my palm and across my fingertips and as I center that back downward I'm going to allow this clay to center because I'm making a, a platter you know a large plate I want to have a fairly wide base uh, the wider base provides greater stability with a, a finished piece such as a serving platter or a large plate, uh, similar to what you would create if you were making a large bowl. And you don't want to have a little skinny base, you want to have a large enough base that will support what it is that you're making. I'm going to switch over and use a little bit of the karate chop method here using my pinky of my right hand and part of my palm to help flatten that out a little bit. My left hand maintains that outer diameter. Helps to keep everything relatively centered and you get the clay to a point you know where it's where it's centered and it's fairly close what you can always do if you find it's off just a little bit you could take one of your tools here and just simply trim that up and get rid of some of that junk in advance so that you're outside you don't want to act like you're fighting it Okay, and, and with centering, it's nice to have a piece that's perfectly centered, but for potters, uh, you'll find that you have a degree of tolerance. So as you create pots, you'll, you'll find a degree of... So as I've coned and centered, I now have a thick piece that's going to provide me with 
uh, a sufficient size for a base. This provides the base for my pot. And I'm going to begin by making a target. And within that target, that's where I'm going to open it. I'm going to create a hole. And then I'm going to pull that open. So as I do that, just with any other piece, I create a little bit of a cradle here with my right hand and I'm using my ring finger and middle finger of my left hand to go down that center and create the initial hole. I will stop the wheel and check my thickness and that's a little thick. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. That's good. All right, so I've established that the bottom of the pot is the proper, the appropriate thickness for what it is I want. And now I'm going to begin the process of opening to the wall. So as I, as I set my speed back to a, a slow to medium speed, I'm going to once again brace my right hand, gently touching the outer wall of the clay and my ring finger and middle finger of my left hand going through this saddle, this cradle. I'm going to move slowly outwards towards my right hand. Remember to maintain, keep your water on there so that the clay flows smoothly through your hand. And as I do this, as I open it up, you can see that I'm creating a bit of a, a rim here. And eventually, that's going to connect up with the outer wall, and I'm going to push that together to compress it so it's even and uniform. What becomes really important when you're opening this up, when you're making a plate, in particular, anything that's got a large open surface space. With cylinders and small bowls it's not as important but it is beneficial to do. It's nice to be able to compress the bottom of the pot. And to compress you would simply again take, you can use either middle finger, okay, right hand or left hand, and once I finished opening it then I'll go back with that middle finger and I'll go from the outside to the center right at the bottom of the pot and I'll gently compress it downward uh, because I've, I've stretched the clay and as you stretch clay, if you work with clay often enough, you know that as you, as you pinch it and stretch it, it starts to crack and just generically we call those stress cracks. Uh, we want to avoid those stress cracks so uh, I'll show you in a moment what that's going to look like to compress the bottom of your pot as you do this. Compressing that bottom of the pot is going to help avoid stress cracks later on, especially as the pot is drying. Okay, And now I can take my left middle finger and with a gentle downward pressure, I'm going to move back and forth from the outside to the center a couple of times. This is not about, you know, really moving any clay. This is just simply about compressing the bottom so it's more uniform and more even. And this, will, this is one of the techniques that will help you avoid uh, any stress cracks or S cracks that happen during the drying and subsequently during the firing process. So it's just a matter of compressing that bottom down. That's a good idea to do. So now that I've basically finished opening up the inside of my plate, my platter, the inside is, that's essentially my inside diameter now. I'm not going to change that very much as I work the rest of the clay. Now, even though I'm making a, a large plate or a platter, I still want to pull my wall. As I make my pulls, I still want to come up vertically. I know I'm making a plate, but I don't want to make it look like a plate just yet. In other words, I don't want to pull this out to make a big rim. I want to keep my wall up so that I have control over it 
and we're using a potter's rib, I'll be able to flatten that out into the rim of what's going to become my plate, or in this case, a platter. So, I'm putting on a little water for lubrication. As I do with all of my pots that I pull, I'm going to make a little groove down there at the bottom using my ring and middle finger of my right hand, keeping my right forearm braced firmly on my leg and against my body. I pull up slowly towards the rim and as I get to the rim I lift right off. My fingers, particularly of my left hand, my thumb and middle finger are opposing each other. Thumb on the outside, middle finger on the inside. As I get to the rim, whatever that thickness is, I just continue right off. I don't pinch. The compression happens when you come back and make a C. Either you may use your index finger and your thumb to create the C, or sometimes I use my middle finger and my thumb to create the C. It doesn't matter. The idea is, is you're just allowing that clay to flow between your fingers, and then you come in with your index finger of your right hand, and gently compress the rim of that pot downward a little bit. This is important because you pull the clay up and you're stretching it, now you're compressing it back a little bit and you get to see the thickness of your wall at that point. So I can see how thin the rim is at this point whereas down below it's a little bit thicker. So as I work from below I'm going to, as I make a pull, I'm making a little groove and again, as I pull upwards, I'm going to relax a little bit as I move up because I don't want to thin out my rim any more than it already is. And I lift right off, I come back, and I compress that. Now, I could, just by example, I could compress that down a little bit more and thicken that up a little bit by controlling the space of my C, think of the C, by controlling that space, I'm forcing the clay down and I'm thickening the rim. But my finger and my thumb are providing the point of resistance. So as I push down with my index finger of my right hand, my thumb and index finger of my left hand are providing the point of resistance that that clay has to fill in. So this provides me with a little bit more clay, a little thicker wall that I can more safely work with, and I won't have a really thin rim that I'll have to contend with later on. So there I've thickened that up just a little bit. I'm going to make another pull out of this here. So I start with another groove at the bottom, Get my, I'll put a little lubrication on there, get my fingers down there, and get my right thumb resting in between my fingers of my right hand. My left middle finger again is opposite the thumb, so as I pull upward I have a constant point of resistance. So right now that's looking pretty good. Because I'm making a larger platter rather than a dinner plate, I want to think of this as this needs to be a little more durable product. So I don't want to have to have something that's going to be, because this is something that's going to be used for, say, you know, putting steaks um, or larger, uh, you know, quantities of food on it. I want the wall, I want the whole pot to be a little bit thicker, and so I'm going to leave a little bit thicker wall in that case. Now, because I'm making a plate, what I also like to do now is because I'm going to start taking this wall of clay and flatten that out into a rim. I don't want to have to reach underneath it later on with a tool to trim out that base. So I'm going to do this in advance. I'm going to go in with my potter's rib and I'm going to trim out that little bit of excess clay down there at the bottom and I'm going to use the long edge of my rib to clean up the outside of my pot of my plate, my platter just to clean up some of the loose clay that's on the outside. And this is, this is done just in a, in a very gentle, delicate manner. 
you don't need a whole lot of, the more pressure you put, the more you're gonna alter your pot. So in this case, this is just a minimal amount of pressure. Okay, and I relax and release. Anything that you do quickly, if I were to bump, well now I have something I have to fix. If you were to do something quickly or accidentally, an easy enough fix, I like to hold my hand for, to brace my hand, and then I just use a couple of fingers, similar to a scissor, make sure you have lubrication, and I can put that over the wall, and I can simply straighten that up. There we are, we're back in action again. So, as I clean that up one last time, there we are. Now, finish that. So now I have my outer wall, and I have my inside diameter. Now what I'd like to use is a, a rib that's maybe a little bit larger. So as we are ready now, uh, let's revisit a little bit. Uh, we're at a point now where we are ready to open up the wall and uh, open up the rim, excuse me, and make a rim of our platter. Uh, I have a couple of different tools here that I'd like to introduce to you. Um, I have a rib that is larger. Um, you can see as compared to the standard potter's rib, this one is a little bit larger in size. It has more surface area and it has a couple different curvatures to it. This is a very nice size rib to use when one is making a large or larger bowl, um, in this case uh, also for a platter, um, because it has much more surface area than this particular small rib. Uh, the small rib is great for making little plates, uh, but if I'm making a platter, sometimes even a larger bowl, I like to incorporate the use of a larger rib surface. A tool that I picked up a few years ago that I also like to use, this is a, uh, a tool that is uh, bamboo, uh, is what it's made of. It also has a nice curvature, and you can see that it has a nice long surface area that can be easily used in a variety of surface areas to create a nice wide rim on a platter or even a large bowl. For this particular pot, I'm going to use this large rib, and using this, I'm going to apply some lubrication to my surface area so that my tool flows nicely. I'm going to begin, I hold the tool with two hands, the rib with two hands, and I slowly move downward, doing so in two to three movements. I like to stop periodically and clean a little bit of clay off of my rib. So once again, just as a reminder, our wheel is spinning counterclockwise, which means we want to be working with our tools on the right side of the wheel, somewhere between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. We do not want to be working on the left side of the wheel between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock. That would be contrary to the manner in which the wheel is spinning. So, uh, you risk damaging the clay. So by working over here, I'm able to control and I'm, I'm leaning in. I have a steady, firm control over my clay. So again, I do this in two to three movements. This is not something that you want to do quickly. Okay? You risk collapsing the clay if you do. But you can see with this nice, larger rib, I'm able to create a nice, flat rim okay of my plate my platter in this case I'm going to take a moment here with my sponge and I'm going to mop up some water out of the bottom and one can even with the with a platter like this you can decide if you want to have a little bit of a space in the center that uh, you know would be a tip, like a typical plate or you can choose to kind of flatten that out and blend it in um, a plate is a variation, uh, or a platter, excuse me, is a variation of a plate, so it does make sense that a plate has a space in the bottom. Uh, why not have a platter with a space in the bottom? Okay. Now I can see here that the inside of my, that the rim, the top side of my rim is not totally uh, flush, it's not hitting the rib, so I might be able to reach underneath gently with, with one hand, Okay, and by applying a little bit of pressure, 
I can push that clay upwards and hit that against the rib and I'm finding that this particular rim is going to collapse on me so I have to go with plan B I should not have worked it that way so here's plan B I'm going to take this now had this not happened had I not reached underneath I probably would have been okay I could let this clay stiffen up a little bit and gently I could get this clay back into its upper direction but it needs to be a little bit stiffer. So plan B that I'm going to go for in this case, I'm going to clean this up a little bit here to strengthen it. This is not what you want to have happen, but should it happen, let's go for plan B. Uh, I'm going to clean this up what I can while I have it on the bat, while I have it on the wheel. And this is where we create something with a more decorative edge. Okay, should this happen to happen to you, okay, you can pick up the whole thing, turn it upside down, and shake it. And now there I am returning a little bit of a wall. Okay, now if I flip it back upright, you see it's still going to collapse. So if I leave it upside down, I can create a bit of a scalloped wall on that. This was not intentional, so as I talk about, this becomes plan B. So I would let this stiffen up and I would allow the rim of the pot to be more decorative in this case and that's okay. So uh, when the wall is a little bit stiffer I could go back and fix it up a little bit but I think I'll leave this just as it is. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed uh, my plan for plan B. Thanks.